thing to look at one. So I printed off nine articles and brought them to class for us to analyze. All right, so components of a research journal. So look at your journal article that I gave you and make sure that you can find each of these things on your article. There should be an abstract. <laughs> They're usually pretty well marked. Abstract. And the abstract is what you find when you're when you're researching or finding your data. When you pull up that journal, it the abstract is what's going to show for you. That paragraph will be available for you to read through quickly to see if that's a good article for you or whether you need to move on to a different one. Also, if you go online, um, you put in research in, research um, question online, and you're looking spe for specific data, this part of an article will always be free for you to look at. Um, if you don't have access to that particular journal, then they're going to make you pay to see the rest of it. Right. But you can see the abstract for free. I'm going to say you should also be able to find the introduction. There's an article behind the that. It doesn't actually say. It doesn't actually say introduction. It's discussion. Discussion. Okay. That's a, that's a different part. There may not always be an introduction. There's always going to be an abstract, though. Method. What am I going to find here? How they did their experiment. The steps that they took. So if they're doing a systematic review, it should tell you how they narrowed down their journal articles. What were they looking at specifically when they were looking at a, a huge number of journal articles they were trying to decide which ones they were going to actually correlate together? They will tell you how they did that in there. Results. That seems pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I've seen the other ones here. Discussion. This is a huge meat of your article, and this is where they're going to talk about um, why they made the decisions that they made when they were doing their research. Um, what things they found out specifically. So, hey, we were doing this research article, and what we were looking for was A. But while we were doing it, we also found information about B and C and D. And then references. And references are important. Because if your article is less than five years old, but your references are all greater than five years old, maybe not the most quality data. Or at least not the most timely data. And then determine the level and quality of the evidence using a scale. And then decide if the study is applicable to your practice. Is this what you're looking for? <laughs> At first glance, a journal article might appear intimidating or confusing because it has lots of tables and graphs, lots of information. Especially if you haven't been doing a lot of reading of those kinds of things. So let's look first at the title. <clears throat> what does the title tell you? Can you tell from the title exactly what's going to be covered in the article? <coughs> And then look at your authors. What level of degree do your authors have? A, B, C. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. What does it say? It says A, B, C after their names. I have no idea what that stands for. Me don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Elite business. <laughs> 
Or my favorite is you're reading the names oh, okay. and you can't pronounce any of them. Yeah. yeah. And then you realize that the article was written in Iran or <laughs> Syria oh, or yeah. where is it from? China. Canada. <laughs> Canada. Quebec. How are you feeling about your article so far? Are you trusting the data in there? Just based on the title and the authors? How do I know? You're going to have a hard time with this project. All right, now look at your abstract. I know. Your abstract is supposed to be a brief overview of the article. So what is it they were looking for? Did they find the answer to their question? And how did they come across that? That should all be in your abstract. Yeah, because our nursing issues, we had to do an abstract. And she went our opinion on it, too. And I'm like, that's not usually in an abstract. You don't really put your own opinion in an abstract. No, you don't put your opinion in an abstract, yeah. but she's asking you to analyze the abstract and come up with an opinion based on that. Right. Do you think it's legitimate or quality data or not? Did anybody have an introduction in your article? Um, yeah, I don't think I did. What was that? There was no direction. Background, introduction, background, good. Is your hi is the hypothesis written in there? In the background? Is what? The hypothesis. The question. Where, how do you find that? Is it in the background or in an introduction? Mm-hmm. The first line. First line. Okay. Get the shoe So those are the kind of things we're looking for. Is it this is how these are the things you need to look at to decide whether it's the quality. Um, journal article or that it's looking at the data you're trying to research. So you consider this a quality during article? You, you picked these because you wanted... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like Alright, now look at the methods. How they conducted the study. What procedures did they follow? What instruments did they use? What variables did they measure? If they did a research project and they only looked at 10 patients, can I hypothesize from 10 patients to a large population? Probably not. How many people were in your study? Can you find how many people were in your study? 85? 124? Then the same from the results. In your methods, does it say how many? <clears throat> 51? 60? Here. Twenty-eight thousand five hundred and twenty-five patients. There you go. Oh, that's a result. Can I use this article? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to do. <laughs> all right. How old is it? They're all less than five. Trust me. All right. Now look at your results. So the results should look at all of the data, tell you in figures, tables, graphs, what they came up, what, their, what did their data collection results look like? So it's not a discussion of whether it was appropriate or whether it met the standard or any of that, it's just the results. Pure data, what they collected, Is 
So some of that discussion or that results area is going to be huge. You said 200 and some thousand patients. You can expect that the results portion of your journal article is going to be pretty long because that's a lot of people to analyze. And then discussion, that's where they interpret the results and what is going to come of their study. What, what, what have they decided about doing their study? Are they going to be able to incorporate this hypothesis that they came up with or did they disprove their hypothesis? What was the result? What was the discussion behind that? I can't find it. You can't find the discussion? It should be more. No, the result, like the, what they came up with. Okay. Should be near the end of the article. So, did your article prove what it was trying to prove? This is also where they might put things in their life. We feel that more study needs to be done in this area, or they may say things like, if we um, did the experiment again, we would have changed this instead of changing that. This is where they would have that. And then finally should be the references or the bibliography. And again, these are the citations of where they got their information from. things in on time. Just get your stuff turned in on time. Even if it's not your best work, turn it in on time, get your feedback on it, fix what needs to be fixed, and then turn it back in. But turn it in on time so you can get the points that you that you need. I haven't read it yet. Is this like you turn in? Yep, so it's broken down. So we, each, each submission is due at a different time, and it looks at something different. She'll talk about that more next week. So with that being said, though, is next week in person? All right, so here is a little flow chart to help you analyze your research article. Is the title related to the topic that you're looking for? Does it have the keywords that you had in mind? Okay, yes. Then I'm going to go on and look at it further. No, I'm going to skip this article and go on to the next. So this is a, a nice flow chart. So I would print this out and keep it with my research and use it to analyze my research articles to decide whether I'm going to use that research article or not. Okay, so yes, it's got the keywords. Yes, the title is appropriate. I'm going to read the abstract the summary and the conclusion. Does it have clear objectives? Does it have a well-defined research hypothesis? And are the cons conclusions precise? Or did they just say, well, maybe we should do this and sort of maybe that. If it's like that, you don't want that article. That's not specific or precise enough. All right, so it meets all those things. Is the above useful or relevant to what you're looking for? If it's yes, read the entire article. If it's no, skip the article and find the next one.
right, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to take your article and you're going to go through these next steps. Look at the title. So if you were using this article, what do you think your research would be about? Look how long this title is on this article, guys. <laughs> you think that's specific enough? Researching nurses who either A, have a better education and is better reducing the mortality rate in hospitals, in acute care hospitals. So as you're pulling up these articles in your research, look at the title. And the first step is if the title doesn't speak to what you're looking for, skip the article and move on. Abstract. Is the conclusion in the abstract and is it detailed? Does it have clear objectives? Do you understand what it is they specifically were looking for? Is the question detailed and specific? Did I give you guys first? The injurious falls. Oh. Factors and things. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yes. It says no. while evidence suggests that higher nurse education are associated with lower risks of mortality, which is on here. It so says identifying the factors causing the better document. So does yeah, that mean this would not be a good article? No, it's just saying that one it's aspect well that they think needs further detail is that. Is what? Is that uh, further study there need to better document the association of nurse education. Oh, yeah, they're saying that that's, they didn't get all the information that they wanted. So they felt that article. that's not enough information. So I might skip that article. Hmm. That's what I was wondering. So you can quickly find that in the abstract? You yep. Okay. <clears throat> So when you do your research topics, when you put your searchable items in the journal center, you're going to come up with hundreds, sometimes thousands of journal articles pop up. So what I'm trying to help you do is to narrow them down quickly to get to the ones that you really want to use, okay? All right, introduction, or it might be called background. <clears throat> so this is why they did the study. This is their rationale for conducting the study. So it might start by saying, currently this is what we know, and then because we know this, I wanted to find out about that. So why did they do the study? Or they might say things like, um, I noticed there was this huge gap in the data that was already out there, and that's why I wanted to do this study, to cover that gap of information that's missing. Why are they doing that? I know some of it seems self-explanatory, right? Come on, duh. If I have more, if I have more caregivers on the floor, obviously I'm going to have a decreased number of deaths or a decreased.
decreased number of falls or yeah. I thought when this was going when I was reading it. Eight, right? eight, oh, it depends on the quality of the caregiver, right? But is what the bachelor I program. Like, well, that's what I thought. She's not going to as well. No. Even though it said it at the beginning of the abstract. So you read what that where is it? 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 So it's hard when, when you have data that doesn't support your hypothesis, like you were saying, you would think more caregivers on the floor, you'd get better productivity, you'd have better outcomes with your patients, and sometimes that's not always true. So it's difficult when you can't prove your, your hypothesis says, if I had more caregivers, I'd have better quality care. But that doesn't necessarily mean because I have more caregivers, I'm gonna have good quality care, right? Yeah. That'd be a lot of factors other factors that play into it. So maybe then you change your research question to not how many caregivers, but the quality or the experience of the caregivers. And now let's look at my mortality rate and my fall rate and that kind of thing based on experience. Good. Methods. Or can you just say And then they're, then so then we're going back to our Absolutely. You don't always have to have so a positive have outcome to your question. You don't <laughs> always have to your hypothesis. You get information from not proving your hypothesis, too. So now I've proven that it's not the number of caregivers. So now let me go back and research, is it based on another factor? And I might put that in. Yes. Yep. Yes. You got it. On that one topic. You know. Title. <laughs> All right. Methods. I would not be those. How was the experiment carried out? They're probably not going to give you every single detail, but they should give you enough information under, to understand how the study was carried out. How many subjects were involved, how they sampled the data or how they collected the data, what they included and what they didn't include as far as inclusion and exclusion criteria. We had 30 patients, but two of them were terminally ill, so we excluded them from the study because we wanted to make sure that they would be, they would survive for the study, maybe the next 12 weeks or whatever. So, inclusion, exclusion criteria. And then the results. So this is where they give details. Um, this is their figures, their tables, their graphs. You're not interpreting the data in this section, you're just presenting it. Ours be more structured as PPOP though. Yeah, I see it. That's how you're going to to narrow down your data. That's how you're going to narrow down your journals. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so we're how asking the question that four minutes. Okay, so you've <laughs> developed your PICO. <laughs> you've already got your question. And you've decided what things you're going to search, what data you're going to search, the, the searchable data, the terms you're going to use. You've thrown that now in your EBSCO or CINAHL or whatever database you're using, and this is one of the articles that's popped up. Now I need to analyze this article to see if it's information that I want to use to support my hypothesis or whether I just need to get on to the next article. That's what we're trying to determine. Yes. Okay. What am I trying? Who, who am I? Who am I trying to look at? What intervention am I trying to change or um, develop or whatever? Yeah. Is there something already in place that I'm comparing it to? I'm going to do this differently than it's always been done. What are my outcomes, or what am I expecting my outcome to be? And then, what time frame am I going to look at to? Determine. Yeah. All right, so 
They're either statistically significant or they're not significant, and they should be identified as such. We found out this, but it was not statistically significant, which means if I had taken the same number of people someplace else and done the same thing, I still wouldn't see that change. It didn't make that big of a change. That intervention didn't didn't prove to be helpful or make a big significant change if it's not statistically significant. And you want to look at how many people were included in the study and then in this results, how many were excluded? How many did they take out of that initial group? Did they go from 200,000 patients and then they only looked at 85? It makes a big difference. Okay, now to me, this is more detailed information than you guys need to work with. <laughs> but this is just some of the statistics that you will find in your research articles. Regression, variance, paired t-test, all of those things. I don't care if you understand every single one of these things. I don't think it makes the difference whether you trust the data or that just look at the results this is just some examples of how they might come to those results statistics is its own field of study right have you guys taken statistics yet you go for your bachelor's there'll be more statistics you look at Discussion. This is the most important section of the article because this is where all the research questions that were brought up at the beginning are answered. Where they've analyzed all the data. And it will tell you what it felt were the strengths and the limitations or the shortcomings of the study and where they suggest that more research needs to be done. So it's a very important portion of your article, the discussion portion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, it's saying, uh, I recommend that by 2020, at least 80% of our RNs should be educated at the bachelorette level. Well, COVID. <laughs> we just need nurses now. Let's just make yeah. a trade. <laughs> they would burn this one. <laughs> that has been an ongoing yeah. suggestion for tens and twenties of years. I remember that being talked like they said by 2024. RNs must have a bachelor in um, order to work in the hospital. And most of your acute care facilities will tell you you have a certain amount of time from the time they hire you to get your bachelor's program. Yeah, I think yeah. they will pay for it. To four to six years now. Mm -hmm. It used to be two. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of a lot of evidence out there that. Continuing on for those last two years to get your bachelor's improves patient outcomes, improves community health. Because you learn things in that bachelor's program that help you manipulate or control or improve your clinical practice. Yes. Right. All right. So. Now go back to your conclusion, reread the conclusion, and ask yourself, does it make sense after reading the article? So there are some Appraisal tools, quality guides, 
summary tools that are available for you to use. articles, I'm analyzing those articles, and I'm coming up with conclusions based on data from other research. That's a literature review. So there's not as much involved with that research article because you're not, um, you're not developing the experiment yourself. You're just looking at other people's <laughs> experiments and you're analyzing or summarizing what you found from those. You can do a literature review as an evidence-based practice project. It's one way of doing it. This is kind of like teaching EKG. You guys look at me like I've got <laughs> three heads. And Probably. <laughs> you're overwhelmed by all the information That's coming funny. at you. Will we see a, a finished project, like an example? Like yep. what one looks like in the end yep. when we're done here? Yep. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she saved a couple from last semester to show you guys. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so when you're doing a literature review, in the introduction, you're going to explain your topic, your key topics that you looked for, so what you searched in the database to come up with the articles that you um, created or that you summarized and your first sentence should really grab the attention of the reader. Then the body is going to summarize, analyze and interpret, evaluate the articles and then you're going to write paragraphs based on those articles that you included in your literature review. So how you found your sources, what you used to decide whether it was good research or, or bad research, what you saw as the strengths and the weaknesses of those sources. And then your conclusion is just going to summarize the key findings and em emphasize their significance. your original question. My original research question was this, and this is what these articles said about that subject. <clears throat> so this was an article that Dr. Heilman wrote as part of her doctorate program. And this was the statement that she made at the beginning of her research article to get everybody's attention. Does this grab your attention? It gets my attention. Those are a lot of big numbers, $700 billion annually to treat cardiovascular disease. That's a lot of money. This was her introduction and background information. <clears throat>
written in third person, not in first person. It's written in third person. Y'all want to go do your doctor so you can write a nice paper like this, right? No. <laughs> no. To be quite honest. when I was on my master's degree too. I had a table that was dedicated to all my articles. They were all piled in different piles. This one had a different Yes, yep, yes. I was like, oh my God. And the door is locked to the office because I didn't want my toddler at that time walking in and like. I was like, get out Do not mess up my order. So this is just an example of the body of her um, article and then her conclusion. your final project. Yeah. I want to grab the person's attention by giving them s some statistics to show them how important this particular project is. This is what I want to affect or change. This is what I looked at and how I, I gathered my data to prove that this intervention was effective. And then these are my results and this is my conclusion. Are there any questions about the exam coming up on Thursday? I mean, questions that I'll answer. I said it so that it can, you can start downloading it on Tuesday. Make sure that she, oh, thank you, Bailey, for reminding me. Um, so remember, I am not having you do the passport assignment for this exam. You're only doing the prep you. So all the prep you. Pass through. You're fine. So do prep you for exam one. 
And then in order to get ready for exam two, I will get rid of prep you and you'll only do pass point. So just do the prep you, ignore the assignment in pass point that says leadership and management. You can ignore that one. You're only doing the prep you. That's what I'm gonna look at to make sure that that's done before you take your exam on Thursday. You can still go in there. I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna look at that to decide whether you, you're prepared for the next exam. I'm only gonna look at pass point from then on. I just wanna be clear, I know you gave us an exam breakdown. The evidence-based practice stuff is not on the semester you can't. Yes, it practice. is. It is? Okay. Yep. Last card. I did make an announcement with the test breakdown. <laughs> yeah. So just like where am I at? <laughs> In the twilight zone. <laughs> About four questions. So there's less questions on the exam, but you can miss less questions in order to get a pass. Yes, here. 